Hey guys, Reef Spy here. I'm uh, going to bring you another exciting video on the saltwater reef keeping hobby. Uh, today I was just going to cover um, my saltwater mixing station. Um, anyone who's been in the hobby knows that one of the best ways to have a successful tank is to keep you know clean water, um, frequent water changes to get the bad stuff out and the good stuff in. Um, so, as any or anything else in the hobby, if it's hard to do, you're less likely to do it. Um, and you know, like most people, I started out just mixing the salt. You know, I had my small tank in a five-gallon bucket. You know, whenever I needed it, and it's quite you know simple to do. It doesn't take too long. When I got to a bigger tank, I had a ninety-gallon tank. <clears throat> I just figured, well, I'm just gonna do the same thing but bigger. So I got one of those brute trash cans um, and figured, you know, I'll do the same thing, just make it when I need it and, you know, do the bucket water changes. And if you've ever been through that process, you know, yeah, as it starts to scale up, it <laughs> becomes more of a hassle. Um, <clears throat> making a, you know, full brute trash can, 25 gallons of RO water, uh, it takes quite a bit of time. Um, so I would, you know, set up my unit, let it start, you know, making the water, uh, constantly checking on the barrel to make sure I'm not overflowing it and getting the correct amount of water in there, you know, setting timers to remind myself to keep going downstairs, checking on it. Finally, you know, after several hours, um, I'd have the water ready. I'd go down, mix the salt water, uh, you know, let it go. Then when it was time to do the water change, I was, you know, siphoning out five buckets full of my 90-gallon tank, um, you know, taking that outside or into the sink to get rid of it, then going downstairs, uh, and, you know, submersing the bucket into the trash can, pulling up, you know, five more buckets of water up, you know, carrying it all the way up the stairs, all along the way, dripping water everywhere, getting soaking wet. It just wasn't a good time, and I figured there has to be a better way, uh, an easier way, and there is. So when I finally upgraded to my 180 gallon tank, um, I went ahead and made myself a saltwater mixing station, which I'm gonna show you now. Okay, so here we go. This is my saltwater mixing station down here in my basement. You might be looking at this and thinking, what the heck are you doing? But it all makes sense. And um, I'm gonna walk you through all the individual components and what they do and how it works and uh, let you know my you know successes that I've had with this and any of the things that I'm going to change to make it better uh, so here we go so as you can see I've got two uh, brute trash cans I think these hold 32 gallons or so um, of water if you filled it all the way up to the brim uh, the way I have it set up it makes about 26 gallons of water at a time uh, so, why don't we start at the beginning here. So this is the RO unit, you probably saw this, maybe you've watched one of my other videos, um, where I was going ahead and changing all of these filters, <coughs> excuse me, uh, on here. So this is the BRS 4 stage RO unit um, that I have set up here. So the way this works is this red line is the cold water coming in. So you see this valve here, so this uh, was already here. Um, this taps into one of my cold water lines and this was feeding my ice maker upstairs. Um, so I already had a little valve uh, you know, piercing this pipe here. So all I did was tee it off of this one here, uh, this cold water line. Um, one half of it goes up to the refrigerator into the ice maker and the other one goes through the red line. Uh, over here <clears throat> into my RU, RO unit. I have a on off valve here that I just got from Bulk Reef Supply. Um, so if I you know want to shut the water off you know right here I can just turn this the water's off. Turn it water goes right back on. Uh, the blue line um, is the product water which goes right back up into this top barrel. Um, and I'll get what's on the other side of this in a second. So that goes into the top barrel. And the black line is the wastewater. 
which goes back up around, comes back down and ends up in my sink here, right here. And so that's how I have the water coming in and out of there. So the blue line comes up into this top barrel um, when I'm making the water. And let's see if I can get this open here. Uh, it's hard to see. Let me get some light. Hang on. Okay. So hopefully you can see it here. So the blue line, I just drilled a hole, uh, comes in into the barrel. And I have installed an auto shut off float switch there. So as the water um, is being made, this is all the reverse osmosis water, fills up the barrel when it hits that float, closes uh, the, switch, the valve there, uh, and it stops producing water. It stops coming into the barrel here. Now the other thing that it also does is trigger There is another valve on here, which comes with the bulk resupply unit. That's an auto shut off valve as well. So when the pressure builds up on this line, uh, it'll back up into that valve and it'll also shut off the wastewater. So in a sense, shutting down production um, of the system. So you're not just constantly running wastewater, you know, when you shut off the product water. So it seems to work pretty good. Um, now I did replace this valve at one point. Uh, it didn't seem like it was 100% reliable where this valve would shut off um, and it would just keep producing, uh, you know, water coming out of the black line. I replaced that valve and it seems like it's working pretty good now. Um, I'm not gonna say I trust it 100%. Not that it's gonna flood my house or anything, but I just don't want it to keep wasting water when I don't need it. So. Uh, if I do have a full barrel and I'm not planning on you know, using any more for a while, um, I'll just you know flip this switch here, turn off the water completely, and I don't have to worry about anything. Uh, in addition, um, the water coming in, this is an old house, I was getting pretty low water pressure. Um, oh, I was probably about 40 PSI or something like that. Uh, and I believe that might have been part of the reason why the auto shutoff valve wasn't working. I think it had to be around 50 PSI, I don't know. Um, but I also just added a uh, booster pump to my RO unit. So that pump right there uh, also kicks on when a pressure gets to a certain level. We'll kick on and you know boost it back up. And that helps with the production. Um, more water gets, I can produce the water faster and I believe it also I uh, use this less when it's running at the higher pressure, but anyway, it works It works good for me. Um, hooked up that way. So I have my water, you know, up here in the top barrel. Um, so if I ever need to, you know, I always have about 25, 26, or 26 to 28 gallons, I think, uh, up here in the big barrel at any time. So whenever I need to, you know, get some RO water, um, I've got this coming out of here and it tees off. So I've got one section right here, which comes to a hose and I could just fill up a bucket uh, with some water um, and, and make some just by using this valve here. Or I've got this other valve here, which if I turn that, I will drain the water into the bottom barrel. So, all right, let me get the lid off of that and I'll show you what's going on in there. All right, first I was gonna show you how this works here. So if I wanted to get some water out of here, all I need to do is lift up the valve and there goes the water. Shut that off. Now I took some water out and you can hear the pump just kicked on. You hear the water coming through the line. Um, so that's because that little float valve has just dropped down uh, and it's allowing it to produce some more water for me. Uh, and if we were to come over here, we'll see. Yep, water's coming out. I'm gonna go ahead and dump this water back in here and let's see if it shuts off on its own.
All right, so that's back up there. So that should have killed the switch. It may take a second to water level to equalize, but oh, here goes it just shut off. So you can hear the pump stopped. You hear that hissing stop. And this is slowly coming to us a halt. So the system's working. When water comes out, it automatically makes more. When it fills up, it automatically shuts off. So that's good. Um, now let's get back to down here. I typically do my water changes on weekend. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead uh, and make myself some salt water, 26 gallons worth. Um, so in order to do that, I need to get the water from up top down here. So all I need to do is just open that valve. Water is now pouring into this bottom one. Let me go ahead and show you this. So as that's filling up, you'll notice in here I've got a couple of things. Um, the water's coming in. I've got a mixing pump down there just to circulate the salt around. And I've also got a heater drop down into there up the water and the temperature. So we'll wait for this to fill up. It's going to take a minute. It usually gets right up to this line here. Uh, and just from doing it several times and measuring it, I know that line right there is about 26 gallons of water. So uh, I got my reef crystals here. So I have a one cup scoop in there. So it takes me 13 cups of salt into here. Uh, and mix that up. So let me give us a minute. Okay, as you can see, it's up to the line. Uh, it's a little dark. Uh, so about that's 26 gallons there. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and shut this valve, and all the while it's going to refill the top container with fresh RO water. Um, so that leaves me down here. So what I need to do is put 13 scoops in. So I just come over to my bucket here, and I'll just level off these scoops. So I'm going to do this 13 times. I won't make you sit through all that, but you get the idea. Uh, so in order to circulate uh, the salt or mix the salt, I have a, a power head in there. So I just turn on my mixing pump. That's going to help circulate the water. Um, and I also have this down here. This is where the water will be pumping out of. And so I didn't go into this. So water flows into here. So then down here, you'll see some piping. So the water comes out from down there, connects through some pipes uh, over to here. So back here is where I have my main pump. Uh, this serves two purposes. One, it also, depending on how, how I have these uh, valves closed or open, will circulate the water from down below, across, back up into the side and back in so it just kind of does a loop so it also helps to stir the water for me uh, then when it is time to actually do my water change which i'll do a video on that uh sometime maybe this weekend when i do my water change uh so after i take my water out so actually well i we might as well just briefly discuss it here this hose here um is what i use to do my water changes so if you notice that little Odd looking thing right there, that hole in the wall. That's actually my laundry chute, um, which goes in and then all the way up, because only up to the second floor actually. Uh, but you know, luckily enough, my fish tank is right above here. And there's a closet behind it, and this chute actually opens up into that closet as well. So all I do is I hook that hose up to my, my tank upstairs. I have a little gadget that I use to help me uh, regulate how much water comes out. I'll show you that in the future, but it goes upstairs um, to the tank. I run the hose just over to the laundry sink here. Uh, when I open up the valves, it pulls the water in. I can drain 25, 26 gallons of water out of there in you know no time. It only takes me, I don't know, three minutes or something like that to empty all that water right into there. Uh, and it's great. There's no buckets involved in taking the water out. So when I need to get the water back upstairs, I just take that end that was emptying into there and connect it to this little, this little nozzle right there, these, or these little quick connects that I got from the garden center. Um, 
There's that one right here. Hose just snaps onto there. I don't even have to screw the hose on. It just snaps on with these little fittings there. Uh, turn a couple of valves there, and the water starts pumping. Instead of, you know, circulating around in the tank here, it'll just pump right back upstairs into the tank. No buckets involved at all. And this just makes a world of difference in doing water changes, trust me. Okay, so I started filling up the salt. This is cup number 13. That is going back into there. <clears throat> so I've got all of my salt into there. I've got my main pump circulating it around. I've also got that additional mixing pump, the power head in there going. I've also got a heater. I can turn that on. Probably don't need it because it's really hot around here right now. Um, that'll get the temperature going. And I've also got a little digital thermometer here. I can plug in. And the temperature's actually perfect the way that it is. I don't even need my heater. So, I'll just turn that off. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and let this sit. Um, you know, go ahead and do its thing, mixing it. And when it's time for me to do my water change, um, all I need to do is, you know, connect the hoses and you know, drain the water from the main tank. Connect it onto the nozzle there. Uh, pump the water right back up. And I'm good to go. And there's not one bucket that I needed to carry uh, to do any of this. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully this will maybe inspire you or give you some idea. Um, you know, but I didn't come up with all of this myself. I've been watching YouTube videos just like you're doing now, getting ideas. And, you know, finding out what's going to work uh, in my situation. So, uh, if you found any of this helpful, please, you know, like, subscribe. Um, I do plan on making more videos in the future. I'm just, you know, kind of getting started here. And, uh, you know, I hope to see what you guys can make. You know, post some links uh, down below. And, you know, I'd love to check it out. Thanks for watching.